Here are the 15 plus tools that I use to find companies when I go through the list building process. So I'm not looking for the people just yet, I'm looking for the companies. So my advice when it comes to list building, uh, whether you're an agency, a solopreneur or a SaaS company, is it depends. It really does depend on who you're trying to reach and the type of companies that they are. Um, so on this next slide or page here, I've got a table which really talks through about the sources that I go to depending on the target audience. So if you're looking for B2B companies in general, LinkedIn and SalesNav, Apollo and Ocean are great places to start. Startups with funding, Crunchbase is quite an affordable uh, one to use. If you're looking for e-commerce brands and you've got store leads, which is a dedicated database for e-commerce and Ocean. If you're looking for agencies, then Clutch and Clay are great tools. Local businesses, Clay again and D7 Lead Finder. If you're scraping, which depends on the source of data, you can use tools like Appify and Instant Data Scraper. And if you're looking for to enrich the, the company lists further with triggers, then you have Triggerfy, Clay, Appify, Phantom Buster, and Scrapely. Now I'm gonna go very quickly through all of these tools in the next 10 minutes to show you how you could go and use them to build the company list. So let's start first of all with B2B companies in general. So we're gonna start with LinkedIn and SalesNav, probably one that you're very, very familiar with. Even on the free LinkedIn account, you can use uh, the filters here within the search. One of the tips I use is just to have this, uh, this URL saved because that gives you to it gets you to just the beginning of a, of a search page for companies. So you don't have a keyword here. Here you'd click all filters and then you could search for uh, North American companies in professional services. There's going to be a lot here. Um, let me do 500 to 1000 employees. I think there'll be less people. Uh, show results. And I've got 6,200 results. Now, of course, this is just on the categorization of LinkedIn. So it's not always going to be accurate. But this is one way that you could quickly use uh, LinkedIn to find searches for free without Sales Navigator. I haven't got a Sales Navigator account active at the moment, but um, there's plenty of other videos on Sales Nav and I'm sure I'll record some in the future. First one, LinkedIn. Um, that's going to be the most up-to-date database. Then you have Apollo. I really like Apollo because it has a lot of filters that you can use to find the target companies. You can search by employees, by department, um, the account location. So you might only want to look for people in uh, Spain, for example. And that's gonna show you that there's 3.4 million companies in Spain, according to Apollo's database. So of course, that doesn't mean that is Spain entirely. Then we can filter down to employees. I wanna to go to 11 to 20, and then I can add additional filters here as well. Now, just on the pay plan of Apollo, you can unlock things like technologies, revenue, I never really trust revenue to be honest, funding opportunity, job posts and scores. Uh, there are signals here, but they are limited to how many signals you can search for. But this is another great source to start with your company list building. My go-to at the moment though is Ocean. So as much as I use Apollo, I usually start in Ocean. The reason I like Ocean is that it allows you to build lookalike lists. So you can start to build a really, really specific list from the very beginning. In this example, I've got Sneak, Alert, Logic, and Black Kite. These are all e-commerce, uh, sorry, not e-commerce, cybersecurity software companies. And I've just put in these three requirements of here are the domains. I want you to find other companies that are like them. And then I've got some additional filters here. So I can do um, company location, has to be Israel, Europe, Canada, United, K United Kingdom, the United States, employee size between a team of 200 and uh, 1,000 essentially. Department size, because I'm looking for uh, the marketers, I wanted to find companies that had marketing and advertising teams between 10 and 100. So in this case, if they just had a solo marketer or a team of two, they're not really the right fit for me in, in the list that I'm building. And there you can see I've got 154, which you might say is a small list, but it's a great place to start. And when you run outbound campaigns, you want to think about all of the different segments that you can use to run campaigns. Uh, one other tool here is Prospio. Prospio has a great Chrome extension that uh, really only works properly in bulk with um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, but it allows you to select all of the results and export them into, um, into a spreadsheet. I think I've got some previous ones here. As you can see, I've been using that. Now let's move on to startups with funding. So Crunchbase is really the, the best tool I find for finding startups with uh, funding. And the main reason being is because they have really good description keywords and filters, as well as being able to determine where the uh, last funding date has been within the past 30 days, 60 days. One tip when you're reaching out to startups, if they just raise around a funding in 30 days, 
everybody and their daughter is going to be sending emails to those uh, to those startups. So I like to look at startups who have raised funding in the last year or more than nine months ago and then reach out to them because they still are likely to have some of the budget and the dust has settled a little bit after they have uh, raised the round of funding. So the, here you do the custom date rate, uh, date range and you would put the start date and the end date. So I might say um, the 1st of June 23. And then the end date might be uh, nine months ago, so uh, the 30th of December, let's just say, oh, 30th, 12th, 23. And now it's going to pull up all of the companies that have raised a round of funding. Now I might want to be targeting seed companies, so this list is getting smaller now. Uh, last funding amount, so I might want to do a minimum of one, uh, but a maximum of 10, uh, this should be million. Ooh, always get confused. That's one million, so one more zero. And then here I want to put, so I've got one million to 10 million. So now I've got 7,426 uh, results. And I'm always just trying to get this result smaller and smaller and smaller. So I can send a really specific message to a very specific subset sector and segment of the companies I'm trying to reach out to. So that's startups with funding. Moving on to e-commerce. So Store Leads is a, a dedicated database of e-commerce data. As they say here, it has over 13 million stores. What I like about store leads is that the um, the filters are really, really good. So you can filter down to the category, um, the estimated monthly sales, the employee count, the country. One of the challenges with searching for e-commerce brands is it's very easy to find the e-commerce brand, but quite hard to find the team behind it. Uh, a lot of e-commerce brands aren't active on LinkedIn. So a lot of the uh, people that work at e-commerce brands are quite hard to find on LinkedIn. So that's just something to, to keep in mind which is why I like to use Ocean to also look for e-commerce brands. In this example, I'm looking for furniture e-commerce related brands in the United Kingdom, and they have a website traffic of over 100,000 visits per month. Now you can see I've got 136 results here and all the filters down here. One of the great things about Ocean is I can actually just click on, click on contacts here and it's now going to find me all of the people within these organizations. So I've got 11,500 people across all of these uh, organizations. Now let's just say I want to find the um, e-commerce, anything to do with e-commerce. So if I click here, it's going to find a broad match of anyone that has a similar title to e-commerce or e-commerce in their job title. So digital merchandiser is e-commerce, visual merchandiser is the same. Um, but let's just say I want to find only the visual merchandisers. So I come back here and then I type visual merchandiser, hit enter. Because I've put them in the speech marks, it's only going to find me people that match this uh, title exactly. Now, of course, there are going to be different variations of this job title, which you'd want to put into um, into the filters here to find those people. And then it's very easy to export all of them uh, into a spreadsheet. Okay, that's e-commerce, let's move on to agencies. Agencies, Clutch is a really good data source for find agencies. In this example, I've just looked for all agencies in Portugal, kept that very broad at the beginning. The first few results are always going to be uh, sponsored uh, ads or sponsored posts. But as we scroll down, we'll start to see that we've got uh, a lot of other um, uh, agencies here that are in Portugal. So I wonder if these ones are Portugal. So Berlin, no, Poland, no, Poland, no. So because I just want Portugal, pretty much starts, it's a bit like Google, the first three, four results are ads, the rest are, are good to go. So now I can see that I've got um, a list of agencies in Portugal. I could use a, a scraper to get this out and I'll show you some scrapers in just a second. Um, moving on to Clay, so in Clay they have a uh, feature that you can build a table with a, a keyword search. So I'll just show you that now, create new table, find companies, and then select one more industry. Again, I'll just use um, advertising and then marketing, because let's say I want to find SEO agencies. So we've got uh, marketing services, advertising services, so that's going to bring all advertising, and all marketing services. So I don't want all of them. I want to be able to find uh, the ones that are in the range that I want to reach out to, 51 to 200, let's say. Um, and then in the description keywords, I want them to I want them to have SEO or search engine optimization. So they won't be necessarily mean that they're a dedicated SEO agency, um, but they should have that uh, keyword in their description 
from LinkedIn. So let's preview the companies. This is all United States at the moment. It's gonna take a few seconds to load up. It didn't work because I did this wrong. So I SEO search engine optimization. So um, optimization, you don't need to worry about the speech marks when it comes to clay. Let me just preview that again. And now I should get a result of, uh, so DMoons, they're a global digital agency and SEO consulting. This one has search engine optimization. Uh, award-winning digital marketing, uh, paid search, social media, search engine optimization. So I've got 486 results here. Um, I could obviously increase this list size by increasing the company size in terms of employees or expand the locations. But again, your campaigns need to be as segmented as possible to make your messaging as relevant as possible. So that's Clay. Another way that you can use Clay is to find uh, local businesses. So now we're going to use Clay to build a, a list of companies or local businesses. So let's create new, new table. We're looking for companies. So we're gonna to go to find local businesses using Google Maps. Here I'm going to put London. Um, London, hold on, let me do Rich, Richmond, London. Is that the right one? I think that's, yep, that's where I, near where I used to live. I'm gonna make the radius a little bit bigger. And now, oh, no, didn't mean to do that. And now I'm gonna scroll down and I've got two options here. Do I search by business type or free text? Now this all depends on how Google lists, uh, Google Maps lists businesses. So if I search for business types and scroll down, there'll be another drop down here. So um, I'm gonna look for mechanic car car repair and then I'm going to just make this bigger because I know there's actually not that many car repair places uh, number of results optional to test this um, I always put in like a hundred because I don't want to use too many um, too many credits I'm going to create a new blank table that's going to work in the background and eventually it's going to pull through all companies which are car repair related companies and I wonder if my friends here it is here um, let's have a quick look Maybe I didn't do the search parameter big enough, but as you can see, there's all of these car repair companies here that I found on this map. And uh, you can see that there's the website, the phone, the address, and sometimes it will find, uh, you can also use this to find the email address as well. But now we're just building the company list. We're not doing contact data or people data. Um, so that's how you build a, a table for local businesses. The next one is D7 Lead Finder. I, I just did a search earlier. I'm looking for barbers in the London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. And as you can see here, the preview of this data gives lots of different examples. I know Supercuts is a uh, chain or like a franchise, and then there'll be some local and independent ones here as well. So uh, D7 Lead Finder is also great if you're targeting local businesses. Now let's move on to scraping. There's actually lots of scraping tools. Um, Appify is one of the tools that I recommend and use quite often. This is where I mentioned Clutch. So the reason why I like Appify is they have pre-built scrapers. Um, sometimes when you set up scraping, there's a lot of nuance to select the right element of the thing that you want to scrape, of the list that you want to scrape. So uh, this one is a clutch agent and it's kind of already set up. So what you need to do is try for free or have a paid plan, set it all up and then it will do that scrape and run it for you. If you're looking for a free version, Instant Data Scraper is a really good uh, tool that you can use. And you can use Instant Data Scraper when the data is quite simple. It's not in like tables or it's not uh, when you click through, it opens up a modal. It could be just the speakers at an event. So a speaker page at an event or a sponsor page at an event that usually just lists company name and company domain, or it might say speaker name, speaker title, company that they work at. Instant Data Scraper will be able to get that data for you very, very quickly. Um, moving on to triggers. So now we have Triggerify. So Triggerify is an awesome tool. I've built a couple of lists already just to demonstrate what it looks like um, to show you how you can find some triggers. But let me just show you how you create a list. So first of all, I go into Triggerify, I click Get Started. I look, I'm wanting to find companies in the United Kingdom. Again, all random examples at the moment just to show. Uh, so we've got recruitment. Let's see what comes up. Recruitment, yep. Uh, and I want to find uh, recruitment companies that have between 10 and 50 people. I think that'll probably give us the, the biggest amount. Um, so again, I just want to preview at the moment. So let me just do 100. 
So I'm going to generate um, a preview of up to 100. So it shows me a sample. And I just want to check whether I'm getting this right. Are there any things that I need to put in the filters here to make sure that um, I am covering all of the bases? All of these look pretty good. Um, I can, of course, just, uh, can't copy, but I could type that into um, my browser and have a look. So then I'd simply click create company list and I'll get 2,176 recruitment companies in the United Kingdom between 10 and 50 people. That was quite quick. Now, what does it look like once you've found the company? Now, this is a, a pre-existing list that I built just a little bit earlier today. Um, Triggerfy has two really, really interesting ways of getting additional data from the company list that you have. They have their own Trig IQ, or also known as um, sales signals. So here is AI signals, Trig IQ. You could write a task and ask it to, uh, I asked it to find, look at the company domain and tell me if they've attended any events this year, because that might be something that I'm using in my messaging. Maybe I'm selling something specific to events, could be sponsorship, could be how to follow up with people at events. Um, and then I hit uh, enter. And here you can see that I've got event updates. It's automatically created this column for me. Um, and now if I just hover over this here, we can see that they have several upcoming events, virtual workshop, London workshop, London workshop, awesome. Um, no data found, no data found. Of course, not all of these companies are going to be running events. So um, they'll, they'll participate in SurgeCon 2023. So that's probably not right. Three colors. Um, that's an old one as well. So maybe my prompt needs to needs to improve. Uh, and it's working through this now. It uses an open AI um, integration here. So there's the information. Another way is to click the enrich in uh, Triggerfy, then click on triggers, news alerts. Now I can look for any event or any trigger such as hiring, promotion, acquisition, merger, office expansion, product launches, is developing something, received funding, uh, decrease in headcount, given an award. So receives an award within the last six months, except, and that's going to start generating the news announcements. Now, it will take a little bit of time to go and generate those news, news announcements, and it will eventually show up um, here. Um, but I imagine this is still working through it at the moment. So that's Triggerfy. We're looking now back. Uh, Clay also does have uh, triggers that you can use. Um, Phantom Buster is another way to look at some signals or triggers. Uh, you have to be careful with Phantom Buster uh, because when you use it on your LinkedIn profile, it uses a, a session cookie, um, which you can get in trouble with. But for example, you can scrape Sales Navigator search results um, or uh, LinkedIn searches. Also, people that have viewed your profile, there are lots of ways that you can use Phantom Buster to build that list uh, from you for, for you. And then lastly, another tool that I find myself going back to week after week is Scrapely. Now, Scrapely allows you to scrape the followers of your competitors' company pages, which you can't really do anywhere else. It also allows you to scrape from LinkedIn Sales Nav, um, and it also can help you scrape the uh, likers and commenters of certain posts without using a session cookie. Uh, Triggerfy also has the feature of um, being able to find social signals. Uh, you put in the URL of the people that you want to find and it will pull through all of the commenters and, and all the people that have engaged in their posts. I'm not sure how, how well I did. I think that might've been longer than 10 minutes. That was a very, very quick run through of all of these different tools. But like I said, these are the main tools that I use on an ongoing basis. And if I just go back to here, this might be a useful resource for you, depending on who you're trying to reach out to. So depending on the target audience of the companies will dictate the tools that you need to use. So when you're looking for the best list building tool, the answer really is it depends. And that all depends on the type of audience that you want to build. And this is just a, a good one pager for you to uh, shortcut your time and maybe expenses by picking the right solutions. There of course are a lot more, but I wanted to share just the ones that I use on a regular basis. Okay, good luck with your list building. Take care.